guys, hope you're doing all right. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take your Shopify store at the moment and turn it into something that's going to generate a lot of sales on autopilot, thousands of sales each month, all without having to pay for any ads. As a quick introduction to myself, if you don't know who I am, my name's Lewis. I run a remote SEO agency in the UK, um, and we help luxury e-com brands turn their store into an asset that can generate lots and lots more sales. And I'm just going to take you through the workflow that we follow to get our customers outranking Amazon, Etsy, eBay, all of those kind of uh, businesses and get them at the top of the Google search results. So at the moment, you're, you've probably got a really nice looking Shopify store generating some good sales, good following through Instagram, through social media and really growing a following for your brand. And that on the back end is going to generate a lot of sales all coming through your store it's probably looking nice converting well at the moment um, but if you want to really turn it into something that's going to generate a lot of sales that you don't have to rely on external platforms that you don't own like instagram facebook that kind of thing um, you really need to deep dive into where the traffic is being generated so take a look at your google analytics understand where people are landing on your site what their journey is and what what the current situation is you might also want to be able to use a tool like SEM Rush. See that up here. Um, you can just take a look at how your website is looking to Google. So I'll just put an Amazon at the top here and you can just understand what's pulling in traffic for them, where it's coming from and how much, how much, how many monthly visitors are coming to the store. In the case of Amazon, they're actually generating 1.7 billion monthly visitors to the store. Um, you're not going to be on that level, but you'll be able to get a good insight into how you're doing and also see all the keywords that you're ranking for. So um, if in your case, it might be a brand name, it might be different products that you offer, and you'll really be able to understand that and where the current opportunity is for you guys. So that's the first piece. You understand where it's currently being generated, and then you might, you're might you going to need to learn what's limiting visibility. So if you take a look at Amazon, they might be ranking well, so they're ranking well for all of their brand related key to keywords. Um, but it might be the case, like say if you're selling coats, so let's say luxury, luxury down jackets, let's say that you might, you need to understand where someone might be searching luxury down jacket and you might want to see, look, where, where am I actually ranking for this? So you'll go back to SEMrush, um, see where you're ranking and see what your competitors are doing as well. And that's how you're going to learn what's limiting your visibility. Maybe you run a speed test on your site, something like that. Just understand what's going on there. You can also identify the untapped opportunity, which is the final part where you're not actually tapping into certain keywords. So your competitors might be. So in this, in the case of Amazon, eBay might be able to target certain keywords that Amazon aren't. It's quite unlikely, but it might be the case for your brand. And that's where you start building a list, a list of keywords that you might want to target in the future where your your products can really offer something that's going to be a good solution to what people are searching. And that covers the learning phase. It's going to help you understand where you're currently at and where the opportunity is. So we've built a good picture from the learning phase. We understand where we're at, where the opportunity is, how your competitors are doing, and now you need to do something about that. So first of all, you need to look to fix your customer experience gap. That's going to be things like, is your page difficult to navigate? Is it not correctly formatted in a product page or collection page, whatever you've got? Is it running slowly? So run Google page speed. Take a look at this, put in your page here. So we can put in amazon.com again. So I let it run. And then if we scroll down a bit, we can see how that's actually doing. So uh, that Amazon's actually getting a score of 53 out of 100 on Google PageSpeed Insights. And you can check how your website's doing on mobile. You can check how it's doing on desktop. It's gonna break down for you what you need to do to make it run faster. And what that's gonna do is mean that your customers are getting a better experience when they're on your site. And that's going to help Google understand that you're providing a better user experience. So your rankings are gonna go up and people aren't waiting around for it to load, so your conversion rates are gonna go up too. 
So that this customer experience gap bit is really a two a two headed approach. It's improving conversion rate and it's imp also improving your rankings on Google. And then we just really you need to look at understand is your categorization currently optimal? So are there opportunities where you're not currently categorizing your pages effectively? Sometimes it might be that the you've got lots and lots of products all in your let's say your coats category you might need to break that up into something that's more um, easy to navigate because otherwise people are going to be scrolling for ages and ages and ages and they're actually not going to be able to get what they find so you might want to break up into um, lighter jackets uh, winter coats down jackets all of these different categories and then that's that's when you've achieved optimal categorization when it's not taking too long for people to scroll through and find what they want to find and then what that's going to mean is that you're going to be able to give people again a better experience when they land on your site and you're also going to be in front of lots of different keywords so pretend in the past you weren't able to rank for winter coats but now you've got a whole winter coats collection page then that puts you in front of every single person that's search searching something related to winter coats so that's why it says here you need to build categories in line with the untapped opportunity and the opportunity that your competitors are currently ranking for so when that's done we've achieved this optimal categorization we look to build relevance and value of the existing pages and that's really looking to what we found previously what's limiting your visibility and really building on that to work out and show to Google that your collection pages, your product pages are relevant and they're also valuable to what people are searching. And that covers the improving phase. So that's really about improving your existing assets and using that and creating a good foundation to move forwards and really run with this campaign. So scrolling down, We've got the building phase here and this is where it gets a bit more exciting you can really see some great results here so i've just pulled up gymshark as a good example of this so they've got their central site um, where you can navigate to the collection pages all of that and they've also got their blog as well so they're providing loads and loads of useful information for people that are going to be in their target audience searching things related to fitness but they might not be searching something related to one of their collection pages just yet and that's really the focus of the building phase we need to create new store scaling assets that are going to get you in front of more people and more high converting people as well so there's an opportunity here to develop new collection pages as i mentioned before there might be the opportunity to find more collections and more ways you can categorize your products and there's also this average order value and customer lifetime value deep dive so you need to look into are there opportunities where we can upsell our current customers or package together our items to find something that's actually getting searched so you'll be able to find in the learning phase where there might be some opportunity for you to create um, hampers or or gift items or um, subscription boxes something like that if there is true demand for it and that's going to enable you to go ahead and build store, store scaling assets around your product pages, new product pages and new collection pages as well. But really understanding what people are searching for and what the actual demand is in your industry. And then in addition to that is the audience growth assets. So this is where you can get in front of people that aren't necessarily searching for your, foot, your products, but they're actually searching for things related to the industry. And that's where Gymshark's coming in. Um, giving people tips on fitness and all of that kind of thing as well and that all that's going to do is build your brand awareness and also support all of your all of your different collection pages and show Google that you are actually really really relevant and it's going to build boost your authority in the industry as well and then we'll move on to the promotion phase so the pr promotion phase arguably the most important phase and the most high return on your investment is actually promoting what you've got what you've built here and getting it in front of more and more people so you need to leverage your brand assets you need to find out what have we got in the way of content and what are we actually driving traffic towards and where do we want to drive our traffic on our store build relationships in the industry 
So this is really about talking to bloggers in the industry. So you might be a fitness brand like Gymshark. You'll be talking to other fitness bloggers and just understanding what their content's doing and where you might be able to offer a bit of value for their audience, potentially promote a guest post on their site, and that's going to enable you to get a link back to your website. And eventually what that's going to do is develop your thought leadership in the space and grow your authority. And that's growing authority in the eyes of potential customers and also growing authority for Google as well. Google's going to notice that you've got good links back to your website from other websites that are really high authority and what that's going to do is going to show google look this website here this one about luxury coats or something like that is in fact a really strong authority and that's going to boost you up even higher and then you'd put that on repeat so you continue creating your new store scaling assets and you can continue promoting the content and eventually what you're going to have is a website that's ahead of Amazon, it's ahead of eBay, it's ahead of Etsy, it's ahead of all of these heavyweights just because you've broken down the strategy so well and really been able to put yourselves on the front foot in terms of getting organic traffic to the store. Um, thanks a lot for watching. That's all I've got for you today. But if you've got any questions, just let me know.